Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back, it's Jordan here. Today we're finally going to start constructing the medieval scene underneath the table here. Yes, we've got to build a platform. I've got to move all this stuff in order to do that. Then we've got to go hood up the uh, wood yard. Might have to go to the Home Depot too, not too sure. Gonna have to inspect the garage. But uh, first thing I got to do is just get all of this awesome castle-related items out from under this table, just sort of clean it up so that we can uh, make space for the new platform. Woohoo! I'm freaking excited for uh, this day here. I'm really excited to actually start this project. I've been talking about it for way too long. But today is the day, so let's do it. So now that that's all cleared up, the next thing I got to do is remove all the dog hair. You might not see it, but there is actually quite a bit under there. I do vacuum as much as possible down here because obviously that eliminates dust i don't want dust going all over this uh beautiful lego that i have down here so i do vacuum as frequently as possible and it's important to do that before i get started here see i'm telling you i do this a minimum of once a week that's not cool man that's not cool stella and tico <laughs> keep that away from my lego room I will say though that most of that comes from this carpet here because they love to lay on this carpet while I'm building right here. Just finished building all these minifigures and making a review on them and stuff like that. But yeah, most of that hair comes from uh, right here where we build and they lay. Now I got to brew uh, evening coffee before we get started with the table construction. All right, so here's the wood yard. We've got some options here. I want to do it with the white malamine, right? This actually used to be a filler table when we used the Linman tables. That's not going to be big enough because we can fit a 40 inch uh, surface down there. Now I'm going to use inches. I'm sorry everybody that uses centimeters. I am a Canadian. I do use centimeters, but when it comes to construction, I use inches for some reason. I've got some plywood here. Uh, we've got some shelves. I've got some closet doors from the twins room, but these are the pieces that we're going to use right here. These are thick pieces of malamine. I'll pull those out. So let's give this a quick measure here. It looks like it's 40 inches, which is essentially four base plates. Just a tad short, but it should work. And it's about, you know, four feet. So 48 and a half inches uh, wide. So I do have two of them that are exactly the same. So when I put these two side by side, that one and this one, sorry, not side by side, but like long wise, it should be perfect for the medieval scene. This is actually what we used to use, so it's perfect. It used to be under there. You can even see the screw holes where we had the legs. We can just go right through those same screw holes, and the legs are just right here. Perfect. <laughs> I, I will say, though, I used to have more of these in this exact size, and I actually eliminated a lot of them because we cut them into 15-inch uh, strips for the platform on top of the table. But uh, I'm going to hold these down along with some legs and get it all set up. Actually, to tell you the truth, I'm surprised those were in the garage. I, it was a surprise to me. I couldn't even remember that those were there. So I thought we used them all for this platform, right? I thought we used them all for this. So I'm really excited that I don't have to go to the hardware store today. I mean, eventually I'm gonna have to go to the hardware store because eventually I wanna do everything under here. But the measurements are all pretty, you know, they're pretty simple, but they're not the easiest thing on the planet. So I'm glad that we have some wood here uh, so that we can try uh, just the basic layout for the one platform out before we get started with the entire thing. My dogs are barking. Is that a delivery? Is that a delivery? Maybe a Lego one? Woo! <laughs> it is a Lego delivery. And you know what? This is a land delivery. Can't show you what's in there. Surprisingly enough, this is a product that hasn't been leaked and nobody knows about it. Woo! But I do. <laughs> I'm going to open it up and see what's inside. I, I know what's inside. But this one here came straight from Denmark. They always get delivered late at night. There it is. Beauty. Oh, I should have opened that one on camera. Oh. So ultimately, I've decided to go with uh, the 40 inches rather than the 50 inches. Uh, that way, I don't have to work around the table legs. Also, if I did it out to here on this side and that side... That makes this hallway a little bit narrow, right? And when I'm reaching to work on like this over here, my foot sort of comes there, right? So I don't really want to be stepping on my Lego 
And I know we lose 10 inches, but you're still going to be able to see it. You know, you bend down like this, you'll be able to see everything nicely. Uh, especially once we get the lights in there, right? It'll look really cool. Uh, let's go uh, grab the other piece there. Uh-oh, I forgot about my coffee. Uh-oh. That's all right. It'll be good. Put a little bit of milk in there. Double run that bad boy. Let's go get the other piece of wood while that finishes brewing. So this is uh, one sheet of malamine, essentially. It's cut to 40 inches wide. And then it is actually, it's not 96 inches long, which is eight feet. It's 97 inches long. So that's going to come to about here. I might even push it in just a smidget like that there. And then when we go over here, watch my coffee. It's coming with me. <laughs> when we come over here, we can see it ends right here, which sort of works because you can see it's right. It's sort of hard to visualize on the camera, but it sort of ends perfectly, right? So, yeah. <laughs> now what we're going to have to do is probably build another platform eventually. I'll talk about this more later in this video, but that spans right here and goes across. And then we're going to have to build more here. And I'm going to have to recustomize uh, the underwater area. I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do there, but let's take a quick measurement over there, I guess, and see what we're at. I kicked it. I kicked it. I kicked my coffee. I'm telling you to watch out for my coffee, and I'm kicking it. Why would I put that on the ground? Jeepers. Okay, so here's the dilemma now. You can see this comes to 28 inches. For, for the sake of this video, I know base plates are 10.1 inches or something ridiculous. Just say that they're 10 inches because we have space for overhang down here, so it's all good. Um, so now I have, a, I have a dilemma. So this space here is uh, it could, is 28 inches, whereas it could be 30, making it a perfect base plate almost. 30.3 or whatever you want to call it. So if I bring it out to there, then we're at 30. Then I just have to go to the hardware store and get them to cut uh, sheets of 30 inches when we do this back run because eventually it's going to go all the way across there. And then we'll just replicate this for the train yard over there. Okay, that's sort of my thought process there. But let's uh, put the legs on this thing and start laying down some base plates. Uh, putting the legs on is going to be fairly easy. I only need one, two, three, four, and five, six. I'd say those look close enough, hey? All about the same length or so. You can see I've used them as legs before. Pretty convenient that I have all this stuff in the workshop. Maybe I should be using those, the little stumpy ones that I bought. Or that I cut and made from Ikea uh, Adil's legs. But I think these work just as good. And honestly, I think it's going to sit pretty level. That's some pretty thick malamine that we have down there. So let's grab a drill and let's uh, construct it. One thing I could do and probably will do is put the edging on. You can buy the stuff that's just iron-on edging for malamine. See how good that looks? Mm-hmm. And look, here's the repercussions of not adding the 0.1 inch. <laughs> you see the overhang? It's not too bad, though. I mean, that's the, that's the repercussions of not measuring base plates for uh, when I was building that up here. here. Down here, I don't think it really matters because it's only four base plates. It can hang over a bit. Whatever. It is what it is. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to go get new wood cut, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, this stuff's fine. It's it's going to work. It's going to be not even noticeable. But yeah, I should put some of that uh, edging down here. You can see the thickness of this melamine. You see that? Very thick compared to this stuff. But that's because I'm not building a frame for this stuff here. A lot of people were telling me to build a frame within the table legs. I could do that too. It's just a lot more work. I'd have to go to the hardware store and start cutting two by fours and stuff and start screwing through these or putting brackets on these. And this just seems easy. It's like the old way, but it just seems easy. Now you're probably wondering why is it cut in half? Why is this wood cut in half? Well, that's because I can't fit a full sheet in my vehicle. So when I went to the hardware store, I just got them to cut it in half for me, right? And now I just bridge it like this here. So this piece of wood shares a leg with that piece of wood and it makes the gap sort of seamless. It's fairly straightforward, really. So now the question I have for myself is, did we make this too tall? Are the pre-cut legs that I had too tall? What are the benefits to having it off the ground like this? Well, what did we do at the beginning of this video? We vacuumed. 
If it's down on the ground like this here, it becomes covered in hair and dust very, very quickly, very quickly. But if it's up off the ground, it's not as bad. Most of that hair and stuff goes underneath the platform. So it's sort of a catch 22. I could probably take one or two inches off these legs, whip out the chops on it would not be hard to reduce the height of the legs. I'm sort of thinking about it now. I don't really know. I, I don't know how high is this new castle. I guess that's a determining factor because this is for sure going to be the tallest thing uh, in this here. It's 14.5 uh, inches. Let's have a little look at that, I guess. I'm pretty much going to say that we're okay. You know, 14 and a half inches is about there. So you look at the height clearance there. Sorry, I don't have a camera lady on me right now. But yeah, I'm going to say that we're okay because we've got uh, up to about 20 inches and that's going to be the tallest building there. So 20 inches, 14 and a half, so about five and a half inches of clearance, uh, which isn't too bad. I mean, I guess I could cut the table legs an inch or two just to guarantee that we get more clearance. But I think I'm going to leave it for now. If we get everything on there, it's not going to be hard to take it apart if I want to lower those, like when we get these castles built and put on here. Uh, let's cover this with a tremendous amount of green base plates, which are just right over here. You can see all the ones I bought during that warehouse sale right there. And then we've got uh, miscellaneous colors here and all of our green ones right here. So these are all green base plates that I've been accumulating for these projects. And eventually when we do the train yard, I've also been accumulating gray base plates. Those are all gray base plates for like the train yard and stuff like that. Oh, and now that I think about it though, those are 15 inches. If I do a 40 inch platform, that's not gonna work. 15 plus 15 plus 15 is 45. Uh oh, <laughs> oh, working in base plate dimensions, I'll get to you. All right, these are all the base plates we're gonna use though. So this is sort of what we've got planned so far. As you can see, I've covered the entire surface with green base plates. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, we should mills plate it. I 100% agree that we should mills plate it. But that would probably take, I don't know. I have no idea. Throw a number out there. I don't know. Two grand or something like that to uh, mills plate this surface because we need a lot of 4x4 four four green plate, like a ton of it. So I just don't think it's in our budget right now to mills plate the medieval area for now. Uh, so this surface is sort of a weird length, like I've been discussing. It's 97 inches, so you can see I've got some half base plates back here and some open space right here. But I've measured and I've measured and I've measured, and I think this is the best uh, solution right now. Uh, I've got about a 30-inch spot right here, so eventually we can run a 30-inch table, same sort of style, going all the way across and conjoining to the train yard, which is over there. So I've got to take a measurement. I've got to move all that crap and uh, figure out uh, how long of a span we need and then figure out what optimal cuts would save us the most material to do that. And then I need to build essentially another one of these. Now I might take my skill saw and cut an inch off this table. I might do that. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna do that down here with the shop back following behind us or if I'm gonna unscrew those table legs uh, and probably just take this one here and move it out and take it off. I don't know, or I could just Literally just blend it with Lego. I put a four by four green plate there, a strip all the way along and then just blended it. That might be just easier and then we don't waste material. We don't have to do the headache of doing all that. I don't know. That's just sort of like a little bit of thought process there. Uh, but I know for sure we're gonna do the 30 inch table here. I was thinking about it and I've measured and measured and measured and I think it's gonna work. And yeah, this will be pretty cool because we'll have a train yard over here the same size. Now the issue is, is these tables are like 20 or these table legs are only 23 inches apart. This is a 40 inch surface right here. So if I keep the underwater area over here, I'm okay with it being like this, but it's gotta be lifted up off the ground a little bit. So that might stay like that, but then I might just build a 20 inch platform that runs there and connects, or just not even have a platform over here at all. But I don't know, it might be cool to have a two base plate wide little scene there, or place for the trains to come loop around, maybe a little bit of scene or something like that. I don't even think a train can turn in 20 inches though. So I'll have to think about how to do that. I don't know. At this particular time, this is about all we can do for now. I've placed the medieval blacksmith there. We've also done that medieval uh, three-in-one uh, alternate build there, which was built using three of the three-in-one castles. 
So we have to build another alternate build of that one there, which is the Black Falcon Knight's Castle. And then we also have to build the Lion Knight's Castle, which came up for the 90th anniversary of LEGO. That one's probably going to go here, so you can see it from the perspective of when you walk down this hallway. Uh, that one's probably going to go somewhere in here. Now, before I was wanting to have like a battle down here. I think we're more so going to do like a cluster of sets down here. As you can see, we've got one, two, three, four, five buildings now. We also have the jousting, uh, the medieval jousting. I don't have a box for that one, but I've got to pull that out of the uh, storage room there. We're going to build that as well. And then uh, we're, we're going to have quite a bit under here, right? We could get some more of the medieval blacksmiths and do some alternate builds. I think there's about 10 of them or something like that on Rebrickable. So that's something we could look into doing. And then there's, of course, going to be a bunch of landscaping that we have to do as well. Whether there's a creek, trees, bushes, more things that you would see in a medieval scene. Going to take a lot of inspiration from what I saw at Brickwell Chicago. But that's really about it for today. I'm glad that I got this platform built. Uh, so we've pretty much come to a conclusion what we're going to do with the extension platforms and also the other platform over there. I need to decide if we're going to run a train around this here. Probably not going to do that because it's not really medieval-like. But I don't know. Maybe a train doing the full circuit going around five inches on the exterior would look pretty cool. So we've got to decide if we're going to do that. I'm not too sure. Should we do that? Because then the train would go over there. It would go around there. It would come this way. It would come around. Probably go around here and then go around there. Maybe it would be cool. It would be like a train uh, that does sort of like... Like a time train, I guess, like going through the different times and different scenes. Maybe it would be neat. Would you put a train down here or would you just do medieval or would you have a train just go, you know, five inches around the perimeter of it? It does take away space, but we also have all this space over here. Once I put the other table in, it could extend backward, right? I don't know. Maybe I do go with the train. I'm sort of leaning toward it. I don't know. I'm not really going to set up the track right now because the next thing I got to do is go to the hardware store. But I want to prioritize building that because the embargo is uh, creeping up on me here. So I got to get that built. Uh, yeah, there it is, everybody. That's the uh, medieval area as it stands for right now. So that is uh, looking pretty fresh. As you can see, when we come into the Lego room, you're going to be able to see it. Especially when you just crouch down. Obviously, when I go to the hardware store, I'm going to look at lights too. I've got a couple pals that have been uh, suggesting what lights to use as well. So we're gonna get some nice lighting down there so it's all lit up and that should look pretty cool. And then uh, getting this train done over here would be pretty neat as well. So yeah, everybody let me know what you think of the medieval area by commenting below. And remember to like, subscribe and stay tuned. Farewell.